the marinade. There's no O in marinade. Let's try it one more time. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> the marinade. <laughs> marrow. Marrow. Marinade. Bone, bone marinade. The marinade. The marinade. With Jason Earl. Welcome to the Marinade with Jason Earl, a free-flowing conversation about the creative process with creative people. This is episode 42, and our guest is Austin Lucas. This is Austin's second time on the Marinade. The first was a short yet really intimate conversation, almost one year to the day from the time this episode was recorded. A lot has happened for Austin in a year's time, and uh, this time we we got even deeper and we went kind of heavy into politics and policy in a way that uh, we haven't really on this show before. I've, I've always tried to welcome discussions of both politics and policy whenever the guest wants to go there. Um, I feel comfortable in that realm and I believe we uh, can and must continue to have meaningful conversations about our differences of opinion and belief. And Austin and I, not surprisingly, mostly agreed, but we did push each other's thinking, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to try and match wits with such a sharp guy. Um, oh, and we discussed creativity and the creative process as well as usual. Uh, Austin and I caught up at Little Indies in Orlando, Florida, ahead of Austin's set at Will's Pub. The song you're hearing is hot off of Austin and the Bold Party's brand new live record, No One Is Immortal, which is available wherever you consume music. Just came out last week. Uh, you can also find it over at austinlucas.com. You can order a copy. Y'all, this is such an honor every time I get a chance to see Austin and to talk with him. Um, it is my distinct pleasure to present my conversation with Austin Lucas. Otherwise, we sound great. Buddy, thank you so much. Immortal Americans is a year old now. It is. It turned a year old this weekend. It's so wonderful. It's still one of my favorite records um, ever. I mean, it really is. It's that kind of an impact on me. And it's such a big part of this show. We talk about it all the time. And it's a, a big part of the fans of this show. Um, and this year has just been, I mean, if your social media is any indication, you've had w one hell of a year, sir. Pretty good year, pretty good. Uh, you know, been having fun. I definitely think that like things are on the upswing. Good. You know, I think that uh, you know, that it's really really hard to tell what is happening mm. and what like you know where your career is at, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. There's no like you know really clear indicator for somebody who uh, is like me. Yeah. You know, because I'm not like uh, playing huge venues. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm not selling out, you know what I mean? Like, theaters and, you know, uh, or even a lot of the places that I'm playing. Yeah. You know, like, but the crowds are growing. 
and people are um, a lot more enthusiastic over the last year than they have been in my career, you know, like, so it's pretty, it's weird, like, you know, um, I think, <laughs> I think the bugs know it yeah. what's up right now. Talk about enthusiasm. Yeah, talk about it, yeah. Uh, they, uh, I think they're, they're ready to mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is rock and roll right here. I See if it's that. even coming in. I don't know if the people is, are going to be able to hear it like anyway. we do. All right. So, yeah, like, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's interesting, like, you know, um, I think that uh, I'm more enthusiastic about music than I have been in a really long time, and I think that maybe that's probably the thing that, you know, like, is translating to fans, you know? There was, like, a good period of time where I was, like, sort of just treading water, uh, and I was, like, musically very dissatisfied, not with, like, what I was doing necessarily, um, but just, like, in general, like, I mean, I felt like I was making art that I liked, but I wasn't really enjoying, like, uh, touring and playing in front of people. And, um, you know, like, and I was really depressed for an extensive, like, an extended period of time. You yeah. Know? So uh, this is, like, the first album cycle that I've done since I've been, like, clear of depression. So, like, you know, and I'm not saying nobody's ever clear of depression. Right. You know, it's like I got on psych meds and, you know, like, and my whole life changed. Yeah. You know, like, so this is, like, the first year where, you know, like, I'm going out and playing shows and I'm, like, genuinely in a really great mood, you know, like, almost all of the time and just, like, really, really happy to be around, you know. But this is, like, the first tour I've ever done. Like, this year is the first tour that I've ever done as a follow-up album cycle tour like after i'd already done the whole album cycle tour where like attendance had doubled at all the you know what i mean like yeah. at all the shows and like usually when i do a follow-up tour the year you know what i mean like you know the tours after the record came out attendance goes back down somewhat you oh, know like it plateaus or it goes down a little bit yeah so it's always the album cycle tour that's like the big you know what i mean like the bigger yeah. tour so this is the first time i've ever been on a tour like this this year I should say has is the first time I've done tours where like I can actually see that attendance is going up. Yeah. In like a you know, substantive substantive way. Right. You know what I mean? Like so that's really you know, I mean that's great. You know, like it's a really good place to be and I just think that a lot of that just has to do with how positive and happy I am in general and you know, fans are you know what I mean? Like excited because I'm excited. That's the best thing I could probably say about it. It's so know? true, right? If yeah. you're really into something, whoever it is that you're providing that for, or whoever you're you're in that with, mm -hmm. same thing for a relationship, right? right. If you're totally. really mo if you're really into that relationship or a friendship for that mm -hmm. matter, then that's going to be a much better. It's going to be more more beneficial for both people. Mm -hmm. and they're going to feel that. People feed off that energy. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Has it translated? Has you being happier, feeling better? And your enthusiasm for the art has that translated to to writing since the album came out? Um, no, I'm not writing much happier, uh, really per se. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna allow myself to record a funny song oh, for the cool. first time, but that song's been written forever. Yeah. So like you know, I just uh, have gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, you know, I can have fun, but you know, like. The world's heavy right now. Yeah. You know, like, just because my spirit is light doesn't mean that the world is light. Right. You know, like, and I think that, you know, I'm able to uh, think about a lot of things that I wasn't able to think about and not get anxious about it. Like, for example, you know, like, mm. I've always been, like, uh, you know, a very uh, um, politically minded person. Right. I've always been pretty direct with my fans about that. But there was a long time there where I, like shied away from it somewhat not entirely like i would say what i felt and stuff like that um but i was like pretty you know like aware of the fact that as a country musician you don't want to ram people's you know what i mean like you know uh ram politics down people's throats mm -hmm. they don't like it unless you're wa waving the american flag and supporting the troops yeah as soon as you're like you know like if you're doing that you can do it all fucking day yeah you know what i mean like if you yeah. want to support the troops support police you want to you know what I mean? Like, get behind, you know, like, uh, you know, like, all of these, like, kind of, like, really patriotic tropes and stuff like that. Country music fans are going to love you, and they're going to be like, yeah, do it all day. But, like, when you are critical 
of the government in any way, shape, or form, if you're critical of the actions of police, and if you are raising the flag and trying to raise awareness about, like, you know, a system of white supremacy and oppression inside of, like, the country that we live in, immediately they're going to tell you to shut the fuck up and play, you know, like, or they're just going to be like, you know, go fuck yourself, we're done with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think that over the years, like, I did enough of talking about it that it got rid of a lot of those people. But now I'm just like, I'm done. You know what Good I mean? Like, you. I mean, I just don't, like, I used to be scared that I was going to lose fans, you know, like, and I wanted to be honest, so I would be honest and direct about, yeah. like, what I thought, but I just wouldn't talk about it that often. But the truth is, is that that time's fucking over. Like, yeah. what's going on in this country right now, in the world, you know, like, with, like, a shift over to, like, totalitarianism, like, and fascism? Yeah. The world over. This is a global epidemic. Right. It's not the time to shut up. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, is that, like, me talking about all this stuff is probably going to, like, if, if they succeed in doing what they want to do, like, I know what happens to people like me. Right. You know, like, but the thing is, is that, like, you know, I'm going to stand up now. You know what I mean? Like, before I watch all of my neighbors who I care about get taken away. Right. You know, like, and if you think that that's not where we're headed, then you're a fool. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're a fool. If you think that where we're going right now, that I'm overreacting, that I'm being reactionary, you know what I mean? Like, then I'm sorry. Like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I would love it if you would pull your head out of the sand and take a look around and realize the parallels for what happened in the 1930s in Nazi Germany. Yeah. And, like, if you see the state-sanctioned violence against people, you know, against, like, activists and against, like, people of color in this country right now, then, like, and you see the hands-off approach that the police and the FBI are taking with white supremacist militia groups and terrorists, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. these people are their boots on the ground. And, like, this is exactly this type of stuff yeah. that was happening, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. in Europe. Right. You know, le leading up to World War II. So, like, if, if you want to sit around and pretend like that's not happening, well, you know what? Go right ahead and sit and Netflix and chill, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, in your little tiny, like, everything's okay bubble. But that's not where we're at. So, what do we do? So, uh, I'm with you. And here's my question, then, is, like, we know... Right. That there is a certain segment that doesn't want to hear that and won't like you're, you're you're wasting your time with. Right. The folks who watch Fox News are they're done. Like they're not going to change their minds. But there is a segment of the population and clearly a pretty large segment of the population because the guy got elected. Right. So there's clearly a large segment of the population that that voted that way for some other reason. Right. So, for example, I talked with a good friend this past weekend mm -hmm. who is a registered Republican, but a reasonable guy, intelligent, all of that, right? He wrote in, in 2016, he wrote in Mike Pence. Okay. And his logic was like, okay, I can't stomach voting for Donald Trump, but I also can't stomach voting for Hillary Clinton. So he wrote in Mike Pence. Now, we were hanging out, and I kind of jumped down his Mike throat. Mike Pence is worse than I, Donald well, Trump. Your friend's a... F well... <laughs> well, well, hold on, Austin, because here's the thing. I think, but here's my point. Okay. I think he could be swung okay. this time. You see what I'm saying? Because of what's happened. Because of what's happened. Now, okay. I'm with you. What the fuck were you thinking, right, in that moment? But we can say what the fuck, you know, you're a fucking idiot to the Fox News watcher. The guy like my buddy who is clearly naive. See, the thing is, is that I'm not saying that you're a fucking idiot to the Fox News watcher. I'm not. I'm saying you're complicit. You benefit from this system. Oh, you think right, that it's right. better right. to be able to step on top of people. Right. You know, I actually don't think that a lot of them are idiots. Yes, I think that a lot of people are undereducated. This system that, you know, like our public school system is insanely, you know, like underfunded right now. Right. Like, yes, we are turning out, we have been turning out people who are undereducated for an extended period of time, and now they're reaping the benefits. Right. You know what I mean? Like from people who are undereducated being allowed to vote. Right. People who are able to be swayed in this particular way. I okay, but these are people vote, who have like fears. Having access, right? Okay, they have fears, and they've been brought up to mis be mistrustful of, you know what I mean? Like of people of color. Yeah. And like they are, they feel, you know, like people who are 
queer and trans are things that they don't understand. These are people who like don't want to learn new like language in order to like, you know, like to make it easier for other people. Right. You know, they're the kind of people that just say like, no, fuck you get over yourself. Like right. this is how I was taught and how I was taught is fine. You saying all the things I learned are wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> but also <laughs> the thing that we're trying to say is just keep learning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can keep on learning, you know, like the problem is, is that like a lot of people, they think that it would actually be a better world if these people were removed from the equation. Right. You know what I mean? Like this isn't like, you know, we're not talking about like some sort of innocent form of like racism that like is like just kind of like, you know, like, yeah. Or like that this is like individual people who are like blah, blah, blah. A majority of like, of like, unfortunately, a majority of like of white American people, you know what I mean? Like either they 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 feel they know that they feel more comfortable around white people, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like because they are intrinsically racist. I'm intrinsically racist, you know. Like I'm a I'm a white person from America. I have racist programming in my brain. Okay, all of us do. Every single one of us. We have been culturally programmed to be racist against one another right and against like people of color to be mistrustful these things exist inside of us if you think of human beings as an algorithm as a program you know like then like we're talking about like you know a program that has been meticulously written you know what i mean like inside of our brains as an underlying current you know what i mean like these types of like fears you know, and animosities that we have against other people. And what I'm saying is that we need to rewrite that program because it's wrong. Right. It's been written for us by people who benefit from us having that program, you know, like, and you know, like, unfortunately all of us are walking around with it. Yeah. You know, like there's just certain people who just choose to embrace it because it's easier to embrace something that you feel this fear in your, in the back of your skull and react negatively rather than like confront it and go like, I have this inside of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I have this thing inside of me that needs to be culled and I need to figure out how to cull it. Yeah. You know, like, and like that is the issue. People don't want to do that. So what, there's gotta be lessons in you taking on depression and anxiety, right? I mean, that's something that was in you. Absolutely. That's something that, but you took it on and you're still taking it on. Of course. What is there something that we can learn from that on a, broader scale to confront intrinsic racism to confront systemic systemic racism, racism systemic sexism yeah yeah i mean uh yes there is if you look at the world i don't know if i explained this to you before i've explained this to a lot of people i look at my life like a pile of shit okay this is like a dark way of looking at it. it's kind of gross right there's mm-hmm. a huge pile of shit that's my life and if I don't do something about it, it just gets bigger all the time. Right. So I find the smallest pile, like the smartest, smallest part of it, and I get my, my shovel, metaphorically speaking, and I start scooping it and shoveling it. You right. know what I mean? Like I start working on the edges. And as I work around the edges and the parts that I'm not intimidated by, the overall pile of it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You yeah. know what I mean? Like more shit's going to get dumped into my world. Right. You know what I mean? Like no matter what I do, but I work on it. You yeah. know, like every day I get up and I don't let it like I don't let it intimidate me. I say, no, I'm going to go and work on you. And that's how you have to deal with these kinds of systemic issues that are inside of all of us. Is right. you have to say, like, no, that's not OK. You know, when someone says, hey, man, like, you know, like what you just did hurt me. You don't go like I've been doing this all the time. Fuck off. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't go like I yeah. didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go like, oh, why? How? You know what I mean? Like, hey, hold on a second. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to do that. How did I do that? Please tell me how I can act, you know, like better. That's the thing is that like what a lot of people aren't listening to, they hear people being critical of each other. They say like call out culture, PC culture has gone wild, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not saying that there aren't some people that are like, you know what I mean? Like that are out there that are far out there. I'm not saying that there aren't people that, that don't also utilize the tool as a means of aggression and weapon against other human beings. Right. All right. But majority of the time and this is like almost all the time which is why we need to ignore the things that i just said the situations that i was just talking about people are actually hurt and they're not saying to you you're a horrible piece of shit they're saying hey you hurt me listen to me yeah 
pay attention to how you did this and they right. just want validation and they want you to look them in the eye and say, I realize it. Oh my, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know, like, and that's how we work on these things. We listen to other people. We listen to our peers and other people from our communities that are saying, Hey, I'm hurting. You know, like this is happening to me. And rather than going, well, I've never seen that before. I've never experienced that. Yeah. You know, so how could that be happening to you? Because I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. Yeah. You know, it's like, of course you haven't experienced it. Right. You didn't grow up the way that that person grew up. You and I are both fair skinned human beings, but I guarantee you we did not grow up exactly the same way. Right. Even if we shared a bunch of things in common. Right. We did not grow up in the same way. Right. You know, like, and so the fact is, is that like, you know, like if you tell me something about your life. You know, like, I'm not going to discount it because I didn't grow up that way. Right. I'm going to go, wow, and how did that affect you? Yeah. Explain it to me. You know what I mean? Like, help me to understand better this experience that you had. And what I'm talking, what ever the world is talking about, what all these, you know, what Black Lives Matter is about, you know what I mean? Like, all this stuff that, like, we're dealing with right now that, like, you know, like, you know, that everyone needs to pay attention to is they're not saying, you know what I mean? Like fuck you you're awful and i want you dead they're saying listen to us help us be our allies you know what i mean like you don't understand you know what i mean the 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 statement black lives matter doesn't mean black lives only matter right you know what i mean like it means as well you know what i mean when you say all lives matter that you know what i mean like that takes away you know the power of the statement you're trying to scream over top of a people who have been systematically oppressed since they were brought over here on slave ships right you know what i mean like if you think that that shit ended at the end of the civil war you're wrong if you think that that stuff ended in the 60s you know what i mean like then you are wrong yeah this stuff is still happening today right you know like and if you look at the actual analytical scientific data police data you know what i mean and the statistics of how the population of people of color in the United States and how much they're incarcerated and for what crimes and what kind of crimes most white people get off on, yeah. these types of crimes that white people don't go to prison for, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, then you cannot deny the system of oppression. Execution mm-hmm. rates. Um, exactly. All of these things. Yeah. It's and all, it's crazy. It is insane. It's and crazy. like, and so... You, know, you can't deny that data. You can't, I mean, you can't deny, deny that data. You can close <laughs> yeah. your eyes to it yeah, yeah. and say, I don't believe yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can decide to quote some totally fabricated, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. website, you know, information that you read. Right. You know what I mean? Like, something that doesn't actually have to do with science. Right. But if you look at, if you look at the, just the data, I'm not talking about any kind of a skew, the percentages of people of color who are imprisoned and for what reason versus the percentage of the population, yep. you know what I mean? Like, then one can only come to the conclusion that, like, they are being systematically oppressed. Right. Or that well, there's something intrinsically wrong unless, with yeah, them. Right. I was just and saying, that's unless the, one is and a racist. And if you think that, yeah, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I'm swearing so much on your podcast. You but that's period. Cuss. That's true. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? I'm like, with you. And, and that's really all I've got to say about that subject. Yeah. You know? Like, so... So, okay, so how, back to the, the question then, which I, because th- I think this is really important, is that there is a segment that you're not going to convince. I think it's over. Uh, someone who has, who is a, a racist, we're not going to get them by 2020. Like, m- eventually, over time, compassion, love, listening, that stuff can have an impact. But by, by 2020, you're not going to change the, the diehard Make America Great Again guy. But you may change the guy who voted for the libertarian candidate last time or the guy who, you know, had the, the protest vote or the throwaway vote. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing I can't get my head around when I'm having conversations with people is like, cause I want to scream at them and be like, what the fuck? You don't see this, right? Like it's so obvious now mm-hmm. there is no more argument, but that's what I'm trying to figure out is like, how do we get to that person? Cause those are the people that are going to make the difference. 40 million people have already decided they're going to vote for Donald Trump. It's done, right? Right. So, or whatever the number was last time. But he's going to get the same amount and probably a few more. So how do we get those, the folks who stay home, how, like what is the message when we're talking to people like that? And I don't know if you're encountering these people on the road that are a swing voter, maybe voted for him and now are having voters remorse or anything like that. You know what I mean? You know what? I don't know how to, how to swing those people. I, you know, this is a common thing that people say, I don't know how to make you care. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just don't know how to make people care. Yeah. All I can do is what I'm doing, which is saying, like, no, like, there's something wrong here. We have to pay attention to it. 
Right. You know, like, that's just, you know, like, I'm sorry, but, like, you know, you basically have to, like, suspend all disbelief and yeah. believe that for some reason people are just trying to get one over on you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that literally millions of people all over the United States are all going, well, I want a piece of that racism pie. Yeah, that yeah. I want to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want to call, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I want a piece of call-out culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to suspend all this belief and, and, and think that all these people's experiences are completely invalid. Right. Okay? If you're that person in the middle, you know what I mean? Like, then I would urge you to think about the fact that their experiences are not invalid. Yeah. And that if you are voting, like, in the next election... And it's m- about more than the next election, okay? This right. Is, there's so sure. much more You're in right. this. Yep. The next election is incredibly crucial. So crucial. Okay, it's so crucial. It cannot be denied how, inc- how, how cru- crucial it is, all right? But, like, if you're voting for Donald Trump right now, if you're voting for the GOP, like, in any form, you know what I mean? Because like, there's n- really not very many outlying uh, Republicans who are going against the base. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, if you're voting for them, so you are voting for a future of a boot smashing on our face yeah. constantly. You are voting for racism. You are voting for fascism. Right. You know, like, and, and I'm sorry, like, you are. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, like, I'm not saying that you individually are a terrible human being, okay? But your priorities are definitely not in line with mine. Yeah. You know, like my priorities That's a good way to put it. are, you know, like that of of inclusion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like of peace right. and love, you know, like and, you know, you can go out there and you can say peace and love is, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we'll never have that. You know what I mean? Like and you know what? You know, there will be some conflict in the world. Sure. All right. But like the fact is, is that we live in a very Im- incredible time in in our history while simultaneously everyone thinks the world's more messed up than it's ever been okay we're also less likely to suffer from most of the things that human beings were you know most worried about and we're going to die from over the like course of of history right famine yep disease war War. these three things are actually much less of a problem than they've ever been in the entire history of human civilization. Yep. Okay? Like, in the entire history of human civilization, you are most likely to die from starvation, yep. die from a disease, or die, like, f- through some sort of, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, physical, you know what I mean? Like, conflict with another group of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Less people die of, of like, in wars on planet Earth than any other time in human history. Yep. That doesn't mean that there's not still conflict. Right. It doesn't mean that there's not still, like, people, you know what I mean, like, who are living in a, in a world that is scary. Right. In a world of conflict every single day. Yeah. You know, like, just hoping to survive. Yeah. You know? But statistically speaking, this is data, scientific data. Yeah. You are less likely to die from being killed by another human being than you ever, like... In the history yeah. of mankind, but people don't want to like, face that, right? Because they don't want to. It, data is scary because it forces you to be honest. It forces yeah. you to be real with yourself. You have to go like, oh, I don't have a reason to be afraid of this. I'm just <laughs> anxious because I'm crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and then like, I need to deal and with. And I need to deal with the fact that I'm yeah. like anxious that there's something outside of that. Yeah. And that's the thing that that's my lesson to yeah. society is that like I was perfectly happy denying all of these things about myself, trying to push it away. Like, I don't have a problem. I can fix myself. All I need to do is pull myself up by my bootstraps and get yep. out there and keep keep going. I can, you know, I can exercise this away. I can get fit yeah. this away. I can do, you know, and the truth is all those things helped. Sure. But you're never going to, like, actually get better until you address the actual underlying issue. Right. Which is a chemical imbalance inside of me. Yeah. And human beings, societally, we have a chemical imbalance. Even if you don't have a physical one in your brain, we have all of these negative programs that are running inside of us that we're like, you know, freaking out. Like people are scared of dying of Ebola. You know what I mean? Like, and like, I'm not saying that there couldn't be a mass epidemic in the world right now, but the reason why there's not one isn't because there aren't more infectious diseases. It's not because there isn't like a way for them to like, to, to like travel across, you know what I mean? Like continents more quickly. It's because our health system 
is so incredibly reliable and streamlined. The World Health Organization, you know what I mean? Like, and like, you know, CDC, yeah. you know, like are able to coordinate with all these other organizations all over the world, sending doctors, making sure that everyone knows what's going on. We have new cures for new diseases constantly. Yeah. I mean, even cancer, like five years ago, was much more of a dense death sentence than it is today when we're sitting here right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you think about the amount of technology, the technological leap in the last yeah. decade yeah. on that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, we, and yet we are more afraid of this stuff than ever before. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like, we are more afraid of a disease like Ebola than we ever have been before when we should, we have every reason to be so much less afraid of it. Right. Don't get me wrong, they're not still problems. Yeah. But, like, we have human beings that are paid to deal with these problems, and they're better at it than they ever have been. Well, except for that we're trying to take funding away from them. Right, right, the right. The current administration, right. whatever. And then, like, the other thing, famine. This is the most, I think that this is a really important thing, because human beings, you're more likely statistically to die from a health-related, like, illness based upon eating too much food <laughs> than you are from dying of malnutrition it's or starvation. Crazy, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's and crazy. that's like, think about that shift. Yeah. Okay. So like, if you are more likely to die from eating too much in this world today yeah. than you are from dying of malnutrition and starvation, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and then you think that we don't have enough food for everyone. Yeah. You're wrong again. Yeah. You yeah. Know, everyone's like, we can't support this population. You know, war is just a thing that's got to happen. We can't do this. We can't do that. It's nothing. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing we can do about it. We're just fighting over resources because we have to. And it's like, no, we don't actually like we have more than enough. Yeah. We know how to farm even more than what we do. We throw away insane amounts of food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like way more than enough to feed every single person on the planet. We eat way more than we need to. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and we like, you know what I mean? Like, and we talk about how we can't sustain this thing and like everyone's scared of this or that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and these three things, like this is, this is the path towards seeing the light again. Right. It's like, that was actually something really big for me. I, I like, you know, like it's when I learned that stuff a couple of years ago, these yeah. facts, I was like, holy crap. I was like, holy, I've been worrying about these things at least somewhere in some amount in the back of my mind. Yeah. And like when I let go of that, it allowed me to think about all this other stuff. Yeah. You know, like that was there that like, you know, like that I should have been focusing more on. Yeah. It's like I was using part of my computing power in my brain mm. to deal with all these like other things that were extraneous and like unimportant. <sighs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. and once I let go of those, you know, like, and I started being able to like focus on things that were m actually, you know, like necessary to my life. Yeah. Things would actually make my world better. And, and like, and what I'm saying to any swing voter is like, go to a fully like non-biased news source or a fully non-biased like scientific source and read the data on this stuff and then tell me if you're still afraid of people of color in the way they used to be. Tell me if you're still afraid of your fellow man. Still, tell me if you're still afraid of the world that you live in. Yeah. Because like dudes and dudettes, homies, <laughs> <laughs> you have way less reasons to be afraid. Right. You know, like the thing that we have to be afraid of is quite literally people who benefit from us being afraid. And those people yeah. are in power right now. And they really, really want to stay in power. Yeah. And they're working their butts off all over the world to make sure to prop up more leaders that are like them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you know what Steve Bannon's out there doing right now, yeah. out in the world, it's not like he walked out of the White House and he just stopped being right. influential and stopped being a part of the administration. He's trying to, you he's know, trying like to set up a fucking camp in Italy. He is doing... Uh, <laughs> like, get, go and see what he's doing, okay? They're literally... <laughs> working to like spread fascist factory they are that's exactly <laughs> what they're doing yeah. they are literally doing this and like you know you say you know oh you you're knee-jerk reactionary you're just trying to call everybody a fascist no i'm calling fascist fascist yeah okay amen you can yeah. rebrand them they can call themselves alt-right they can call themselves yeah. whatever they want okay but i know a fucking fascist when i see one yeah. okay and if you don't Please educate yourself. Read, a book. Read yeah. some books about yeah. fascism and yeah. what their priorities were, okay? Yeah. Don't let these people rebrand themselves and sell you this bill of goods that is like going to pull, push all of us into the abyss. Yeah. 
You know what well, I mean? What's so crazy? So many of them aren't trying to rebrand themselves. You know? Well, the majority like, of them are trying to rebrand themselves, and then you have got these other people who are who are that who they would call fringe. You know, extremists, yeah. but really, they're all part of the same they're thing. The I mean, they're all thing. contact in contact with each other. They're not; these people are all connected. Yeah, and like they have vast networks. You know, like that are doing their work incredibly well. Yeah, and like you know, they are leading us down a very, very dark path. And like you know, yes, like in 2020, get out there and vote for somebody of worth. Get these people out of out of offices. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like let's. Let's get rid of gerrymandering and get rid of like all these things that are allowing us to get into this place. You know, I mean, I'll go, I you know, go even further, and we need to start talking about like you know what capitalism is doing to the world and how we can make our system of like of economics better. You yeah. know, like than what it is right now. You know, like how we can make the world a better, more humane place. Right. You know, like and you know, like a lot of people. They're, this is where even if I was starting to get them, I'm going to lose them, you know, like mm. because they're going to be like, fuck you, you commie panko or whatever. By right. the way, I'm not a communist right. at all. OK, yeah. but like I do believe in social issues, mm -hmm. you know, like I do believe in a lot of socialist ideals, mm -hmm. you know, like I also I'm not really a socialist, you know, like but like but the truth is, is that like we have to come together as a community. Mm -hmm. All right. And like if we don't come together as a community. You know, like, and I'm talking about a global community, and we don't start working towards mm -hmm. everyone's benefit, we're all going to suffer in the end. Yeah. These things that you think are great for you right now are not going to be good for your children. They're yeah. not going to be good for your children's children. And we're looking at, like, you know, potential extinction within a couple of generations. You know, like, think about it. God, that's terrifying. You know, like, think about it. Think yeah. about is is your, like, wealth, your material wealth, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is it worth the price right you know like is it if it's worth the price fine you know like if you really think in this like myopic fashion that your comfort is worth more than like you know like human beings being around in 500 or a thousand years then fine right you know what i mean like you believe that but Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying that from all of the rest of us. Right. Fuck you. Rearrange your head. Check your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like the Beastie Boys said, yeah. check your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, get, your, get yourself straight, okay? Yeah. Humanity is more important than you. And are you the most important person in humanity to you? Inarguably, yes. Right. I am the most important person in all of humanity to myself. Sure. But that does not mean that the rest of humanity is not important. And that does not mean that I'm not going to listen to what the rest of them are saying to me and that I'm not going to pay attention to these problems that are going on all over the world and not going to try to do something better about it and not going to talk about it. Yeah. And no amount of like, you know, like a fandom telling me to shut up and play is ever going to get me to stop talking about does it. I don't care. I can talk. I'll, I'll play to 20 people who agree with me for the rest of my life. Do you get that? Do of people course. give you that? Of really? Course. Of course. Less and less. Because so many people have jumped ship because, like, you know, I'm just, like, flying my flag high. Yeah. But, you know, like, it started in 2016 with, or in 2015 with the Confederate flag debate. Yeah. That was when my fans started going, ooh, some of, like, the really? my, my more right fans that I picked up from doing tours with, you know, like, bigger country artists and, yeah. like, being talked about by saving country music and, like, all these, you know, like, websites, like, right. where they're like, oh, that boy can sing. He writes a good song. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they're like, oh, shit. Because you, like, open, you played with Willie. Yeah, yeah and Jamie like, Johnson. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, Brantley Gilbert and yeah. all these people. Like, I'm, you know, like, you know, and I've, I've toured with a lot of these folks. Yeah. You know, like, and, yeah, like, those fans that I picked up on you know, like opening up for that set of, of people. Right. Some of them definitely do not like what I've got to say. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, you know? I see that, I guess. But I just, I, I don't know. And I, and I came along a little bit later, so maybe that's part of it. Is that like... Yeah, I mean, the last like few years, like since Trump was elected, especially things have like, you know, like people have picked sides. Yeah. And like a lot of people have evacuated from like artists like myself that, yeah. you know, like that were... You know, like that. And it's actually funny. I think about it. I'm like, you know, for a while there, I was like, man, I'm not going to just like bombard people with like politics because I don't, you know, like I see all these other artists that are doing it and people are just freaking out about Trump. Yeah. And like, I refuse to do it. And, you know, like I didn't, it's not that I didn't say like, okay, this is awful. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like I was like, oh, this guy is, you know what I mean? Like is evil. What I was, I would say that kind of stuff, but I wasn't going to go on about it 
forever because I knew he was going to get elected. Really? Yes, absolutely. Like, I knew that the possibility was, like... Even after the Access Hollywood shit and everything, the grabbing by the pussy stuff... I did think he was done right then. Yeah. That was the only moment okay. where I was like, I think maybe he's done. Right. You know, like, but then the other thing happened with, like, you know, with, you know, the, like, Hillary's, you know, like, the coming out was Mueller or whatever. Yeah. Uh, was it James Comey? It was Comey. It was, it was Comey, Comey, right? Yeah. Comey, yeah. Like, where he came out and, you know, like, re-emerged, you know what I mean, the email yeah. scandal again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so, like, then I was like, really? F- okay. Yeah. You know, like, but I was not surprised when he won. I cried. Sure. You know, like, I cried, and, you know, like, I was in Italy when it happened, mm. and, like, I, I had the longest night of my life, almost, when it happened, because I yeah. knew what was what was coming, yeah. and I know that it's going to be harder to vote him out of office than it is to, like, to have just yep. beaten him right there. Yep. So, you know, yeah, unfortunately, it's gonna be big. you know, we got to, you know, that's why people got to work on that. That's why we got to stay active, and we got to tell our stories to people, and we got to convince people to listen to us. Right. Anyway, that's all the you've, time I got. Yeah, you give me more <laughs> than I could have asked for. Um, can you real quickly tell me what you're reading right now, especially since we just had that conversation? And um, okay, so what I've been reading recently is um, this book about like um, basically how to um, how to separate um, any fascist leaning tendencies from leftist politics. Um, uh. So the book is called Resistance, Revolution, and Fascism, Zapatismo, and Assemblage Politics. Cool. And, like, it focuses on, like, what the Zapatistas have, like, uh. have done in order to avoid any kind of, like, I don't know if you know anything about the Zapatistas and Chiapas. Very little, but yeah. It's basically, like, what they've done to avoid, like, any kind of totalitarian regime and to, like, keep it completely egalitarian. And, like, uh, right. it's a fascinating read. Um, it's also, yeah. like, um, uh, it's very, um, um, what's the word for it? Uh I mean, I mean, it's like an academic book. Yeah. So, okay. like, so it is an academic book. So, right. you know, like, it's not like it's well written. You know, like, um, I'm actually really good friends with the author, Anthony Faramelli. Oh, cool. Um, I've known him for years and years and years. Um, mm-hmm. But like, it is like, you know, uh, it's met. It's meant for the purpose of like classroom and stuff like okay. that. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, like it's it's not necessarily as like you know like it's not like a page turning flyby. Yeah. You know, like read. It's like it's it like is a information. <laughs> it is information that really like needs to be gi- digested. That is exceptionally important. You yeah. Know? Like and it is well written for the style of academic uh, literature that it is. It's not right. like you know completely like blah, You know what I mean? Right. Like it's right. really really well written. It's a great book. So cool. Um, that's what I'm reading right now. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you again, my friend. This is great. Always is. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me on the show again. Cheers. Cheers. Austin Lucas, y'all. Austin is such a talented and hardworking guy. Thank you so much. Austin, for once again giving us your time and energy. The new live record, No One Is Immortal, sounds so good. Go listen and get a copy, y'all. You can find all things Austin Lucas at austinlucas.com. Follow everything about the Marinade at marinadepodcast.com. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're especially active on Twitter. And try to be as active as possible on Instagram and Facebook. Tell a friend about the show if you like what we're doing. Uh, rate us on your podcast app if you like it um, and give us that five star rating it means a lot to us give us a follow also that's a real simple thing you can do that makes a big difference for us if you really like what we're doing um, please consider joining our patreon community for just a few bucks a month over at patreon.com slash marinade podcast you can get exclusive content like our patron only podcast jason's journey where I talk about the moments that have shaped my creative life. The last few episodes, I've been answering questions from uh, Patreon patrons about the show and just some really thoughtful questions coming from our friends in that community. Um, so it's been a pleasure to kind of like dive deep in celebration of two years of episodes. We're, we're well over two years of episodes now, creeping up on 50, which is a huge milestone for us. We've also done something different recently. So you may have noticed if you follow the show that we have bonus episodes. We formerly released those as website exclusives. 
Well, um, now we're going to release them both on the website and then also they'll hit your podcast feed. They're usually phone interviews, um, but they're just conversations that are great conversations with artists about the creative process that maybe don't make sense as feature episodes because we're not face to face. Or for whatever reason, um, it just doesn't fit the, the the thing that we do with our feature episodes. But nonetheless, um, we feel like our valuable conversation. So check those out. Julia Haltigan, who I'm going to mention in just a second in, uh, again. And then also uh, we had Chris Catalina. And I've got a couple more coming up for you. So really cool stuff uh, happening with the show. And I'm so thankful for all of your support. All right, y'all, it's time for what I'm getting down on, the segment where I talk about the art that has me fired up at the moment. Um, Two podcasts really have my attention, and those are the things I want to talk about during this segment. I finally listened to the podcast Shit Town, which is branded as S-Town if you're looking for it on your podcast app or wherever you find podcasts. It's the story of a small town in Alabama and the fascinating characters that live in that small town. Um, it's just wonderful. It's done by This American Life, uh, who you know, obviously do such a great job um, with everything that they produce. Julia Haltigan turned me on to it, and she was the one from our last uh, bonus episode. Uh, just it's one of those shows that like by the end of it, you miss it, right? Like you, you get so invested in the characters and the story that you miss like having that moment in your day where you're listening to the show. It's that good. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Also radio lab is producing a podcast called Dolly Parton's America about the great, the legendary, the queen Dolly Parton, um, her life and then her influence on American culture. So this is something that if you're a Dolly fan, You've known for a long time and you've probably had many conversations about, but just what an impact she has and how she's just sort of unassailable, it feels like, um, in so many ways. Um, It's just really well done, of course, because the folks from Radio Lab and Dolly's story is just so interesting. I also want to give a quick plug, and that's for the uh, Folk Yeah Festival. Uh, Mike Dunn, who's a musician, who is a uh, a photographer, just an all-around manic creative, uh, manic expressive, and, and a nice guy here in Orlando, where I'm based, uh, put, puts on this festival every year. I went for the first time last year, and it was just such a great experience, such a community feel. It's here in Orlando at Will's Pub, where we've recorded most of our episodes, um, and I'm actually going to be a part of it. So our friend Jordan Foley um, has kind of curated uh, a singer-songwriter stage that I'm going to be a part of. So I'm going to kind of do some interviews with some artists, and then they're going to play songs in the round. And I'm so honored to have been asked to, to, to be a part of this. And then also just to contribute to such a fine event. Mike works so hard and does such a great job. Um, and there's just so many cool artists. This year, he's drawing artists from out of town a little bit more. So Zach Williams from The Lone Bellow, um, Have Gun Will Travel, Our Good Friends, Matt Burke from Have Gun has been on here twice. Um, Ed from Have Gun is a friend of ours. Uh, those guys are just always so good live and and just such sweet, sweet people as well. Um, and then uh, also Caleb Cottle's coming in. The aforementioned Jordan Foley is going to be playing. Our friend Luke Wagner is going to be playing. Just so many great artists that will be there um, at Folk Yeah. It's November 29th and 30th. So that's at the end of the Thanksgiving weekend. So like if you happen to be in the Orlando area um, or Central Florida for Thanksgiving because you have family, maybe sneak out and come on over and uh, enjoy the enjoy the show come stop by my stage in little indies on saturday um and uh if you're in the orlando area definitely make a plan to be here uh but it's it's good enough that it's a destination kind of trip you know um i i I would recommend coming in from out of town if you can swing it because it's just gonna it's always really well done and uh and it's just a great event. So um, just a quick plug because I am involved with it and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Y'all, Austin Lucas for a second time. Unbelievable what we have going on with the show. And I'm just so thankful for Austin's time. And thank you all of you for listening. We got a lot of stuff coming your way. Conversations with Sean James. Verlin Thompson's returning. Seth Walker is returning. Melody Walker from Front Country. Um, we have a a bonus episode with the still tide on the way. There's just so much in the, in the coffers for us ready to go and in the can ready to go. So, um, thank you all for making this possible. I love you. Go out and create something until next time. Cheers y'all.